Raleigh, North Carolina, and somebody asked me if I had to pick one thing, just one, that I would attribute my success in life to, it would absolutely be contour. Just contour. Um, to, kind of, to kind of tell you a story, as, well, as technicians, we're weird anyways, right? You have to be weird to be a technician. That's just how we're wired. Um, and my ADD is making me come down off of that right now and move around. But they, I was obsessed with contour. And that was the day, remember kind of Empress? And I was seeing Empress and you would wax it full contour and it would come out and you would just stain and glaze. And I'm like, this is incredible because you skipped all of these other steps, right? It was contour, so I began kind of my obsession, and I would, I would wax at the kitchen table, and I would do it again, and I would do it again, and it was never good enough, and I would do it again, and I would do it again. This is kind of a snapshot, what we'll look at today, of my life's work. I tell everybody my life's work has come to completion, because back then, back then, I was obsessed with full contour, and I knew that it was the path forward for us as technicians, something that made sense, but you didn't have the materials. We really didn't have CAD. Nothing was digital. So other than Empress, right, it, it really didn't make sense. I even opened my own lab, which was a huge, tragic failure uh, because I tried to do it just Empress only because Empress was full contour. I ended up buying a broken arm casting machine um, just because I had to pay the bills and eat. But yeah, it was, it was always contour. Now, as we're progressing over the years, um, with the zirconia, with the digital, we always had a piece missing, right? So we had the digital, we had the zirconia, but the zirconia we had to do some different things do to try to get the aesthetics. Now, all of these years later, I'm still doing full contour. Um, even if you guys heard me lecture in the past, if I did layer something, it was only two powders, right? I used to say, it's not how many powders you used, it's how you used them kind of thing. And so that one thing, contour, and the focus on contour, I would probably attribute to most of my success um, in my career, that and a great deal of miserable failures. So we tend to overcomplicate things as technicians sometimes, and I always say it's best viewed in its simplest form. You have to be able to see it. When we're talking about contour, we're gonna go through this today, you have to be able to, to see and reproduce it. And if you can control this, you can make this do anything you want, you're set. And a lot of this contour comes into play now when we're talking about zirconia and green stage finishing and mainly hybrids, right? I do a ton of hybrids, but that's where it's really, really important. If you could see it and you can control this and make this and manipulate, do anything you want, then you're set. Uh, so anterior tooth morphology, we're gonna touch on this a little bit, not too much, but of course, if we look at this right here, that's gonna be our most important you know, eight to 10 millimeters in dentistry. And it's where I spend most of my time on a case. So if you see any of the lectures here, um, one of the presenters, if you look at their case and you look and you say, wow, that looks beautiful. You're looking at the midline between eight and nine. You're not even getting anything else absorbed into your mind. You're like, wow, look how nice that is. Everything else could be completely off but if the midline is absolutely perfect. So when I start a case, because it's easy, especially with hybrids, to get lost. When you start, you're over here, and you're over here, and you're back on a molar, then you're back on a lateral, and you're bouncing all over the place. I start right there in the middle, okay? And I don't look anywhere else but right there. I spend all of the time there until it's absolutely perfect. Once I have that perfect, then I start to slide out to the sides, okay? And that's when I'll start looking at the rest of the case. I won't even look at the distals, only the midline. Very, very important. All right, so we're gonna do surface texture anatomy in the hands-on portion, um, but I kinda wanna show you my layout for it. I do the same thing every single time. Um, I'm kind of a freak about that. I even eat my food in order. If anybody here has had dinner with me, you'll see I'll start maybe on the Brussels sprouts and then I'll move over to the green beans. And everybody's like, how's your steak or burger? I'm like, I have no idea. I haven't got there yet. It has to be, and I make teeth the same exact way, okay? So when you start doing that, you start developing a system and you'll also, you'll get efficient and you'll also gain speed and your case is gonna come out nicer. So if we look at the case, the first thing we're gonna do 
There's primary, secondary, and tertiary anatomy. All right, so I'm going to kind of show you the layout. Every case that I do has this in some shape or form on it, even if they don't look like they do. So it can be very aggressive. It could be very minimal. It's up to you. It's up to the patient. It's up to the doctor. It's up to the case. All right. So this is primary. Now, what's great about this is you can make these as long as you want. There's an infinite number of possibilities, okay, for you to make your case with just these next three steps. So you can make these as long or as short as you want. You can make this one that length. You can make this one really long. You can kind of mix them up, all right? Also, the depth in which you cut them in. They can be really, really deep or they could just barely be very, very shallow, just very minimal. Lateral is going to have the one here. Notice it starts out wider, kind of tapers down, cuspid one, one on the distal. Secondary anatomy. I don't put secondary anatomy in all that often, okay? I really, really don't. Um, I'll show you some instances of cases we're going to take a look at that I do have secondary anatomy in, but secondary anatomy can change the case rather quickly. All right, so it can make it look a lot more aggressive, a lot more strong, and a lot more bold by how deep you cut secondary anatomy in. And it's going to be on the distals. And the cuspid is cool because it's on both sides, and it almost touches in the middle, but it doesn't. kind of looks like this, right? Jose knows. Then we're going to have uh, our horizontal. So there's broad horizontal striations, OK? They're going to go like that. Then you can have narrow horizontal striations. And then you could have stippling. So with those three, on one tooth, there's an infinite number of possibilities that you can make that look your own. It could be for your case. Obviously, if you're doing a single central, I'm not really following this because I'm following this. I'm trying to match a single central. But if you're doing 6 through 11, 7 through 10, 8 and 9, that's what I do. If you're doing a hybrid, that's what I do. And I do it the same way every single time. So everybody says I'm very fast, but I already have a roadmap and a plan to where I'm going before I even sit down and start working on the case, okay? Because if I don't, I'm going to sit down and I don't know where to start and I don't know where I'm going. So when we look at these, these two images of these teeth, um, both of them are very, very different, okay? But look at the surface texture. Look at the anatomy. Um, here, your kind of horizontal striations, very narrow very thin. Um, you know, here you're going to have a lot of vertical. It's going to have stippling. And this is what you kind of look at. And what you got to do is once you look at it, then you, I'm going to show you how I actually make that or recreate that. In the tools I used, um, I updated this slide, but the tools you're going to see are the exact same that I've been using forever. Um, that's it. So carbides. This most important, 842R. And then there's a round end taper and there's a flame. Um, they're the same numbers in the Brassler catalog as they are in the Comet catalog. Uh, you know, so whichever ones that you order from, uh, you will be able to find all of those right there. And Scotch Brights, Blue Dialites, Renford Brilliant Discs. Um, I'm addicted to those. Uh, Jose, we were talking about, I'm just like, I, I haven't bought a diamond in I don't know how long. I haven't bought a diamond since those came out. I just have no reason to. They flex, they cut on all the sides, they always, the edge is always sharp, you never lose edge. Um, they get smaller and then I just kind of save them and yes, everybody, because like, well, I've had one break. Yes, you can break them. Um, don't try to flex it in half and it won't break. But that's what I use. And it hasn't changed. And for polishing, I use the short bristle brushes, the Robinson shorts, because the longs and the hair will all come off and it'll get in your shirt and it'll feel like a fresh haircut. And the Harvest Dental, the speed polish is great if I have to polish anything. But when you come to my bench, I don't have a ton of stuff. You're going to be like, oh, where's all the, you know, you think, oh, man, Jack's bench has got to look cool. Yeah, not really. That's all that's laying out there. I don't have a ton of things that do very little. I have very few things that do a lot. And I'll use those same burrs and diamonds, the contour, whatever you have. It would be zirconia, green stage, lithium to silicate, or PMMA. Milled wax if you're doing it anymore. I don't, but you may still be. Um, and here again, here's another example of the midline. And there's two midlines. There's a midline A and a midline B, 
Okay, so directly looking at the facial. If you can never get it looking at the facial, tilt it up and look down through your incisal. That's probably off, right? You guys, are, you guys know what I'm talking about. So you have to get both of them to match to get it to look good. If one is off, it'll throw the other off. I'm still using um, the, the White Plus from IDS CAD for a pre-center opaque in an instance of, you know, a post and core, a dark stump, because that's a benefit now of using the zirconia, especially the, the STML that Argon has, is it's so aesthetic, but then you have those cases where you're going to have a dark stump, post and core, a custom abutment. If you go over it with, let's say you go over it with lithium disilicate, it's bleeding through, right? Then you're coming up with, oh, I'm going to try to press it in the HO or the MO and then layer it, and you just defeated the whole entire purpose. Um, so now we can go ahead and use that to block it out, you know, and it looks like white out inside. But it does an exceptional job. And if you apply it, you got to be at least a millimeter, maybe, maybe a little bit more, a millimeter plus um, of thickness to use it so that it doesn't kind of highlight back through. And notice I stay away from the margins. Stay about a millimeter away from the margins because you don't want it, if you get that on the margins, you're toast. Just remill it because you're not, you're not fixing it. It's going to show right through. Um, so we'll talk about zirconia in the past, in the present, the future, where we are today. You know, and originally it was just, here, just white. It's kind of doing extrinsic staining. I remember the first time somebody told me, it was actually my brother told me about um, a doctor he was working for and he wanted a full contour zirconia crown. I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. It's going to look terrible. Now look at it, right? What do I know? So that's kind of where we were. Then we had the pre-infiltration stains, which were, I like to call, the disaster in the industry. Um, just because you couldn't get any consistency, right? If I, not even like all of us, if we all did one right now A2, we'd have 50 different versions of A2. If I did 10 of them A2, I'd have everything from not A2 to not A2 and everything in the middle. If I did it myself, that's just how it was. It wasn't really great, but it was the best we had at the time. And then we came up with all kind of the cutback techniques, right? And, you know, keeping the incisal edge and buckle cusps, not going over the top. There was no need, all areas of function, still in monolithic zirconia. That's where we were. And they kind of look like this. Um, you know, it was Chicago's that I'd come and I'm doing this. Not because I want to layer, because I had to. Okay, I had to because the material at that point did not give me the aesthetics that I wanted to get. And we did the same thing in anteriors. You know, the cutbacks could be just inside the third, could be the full facial. And then I came up with things like this using, these were um, Zerliner pastes that I would go ahead and apply, fire it to try to get the effects. And there's two powder build. I'd throw some whoop woos on there and that was it, right? That's all really ceramics. I didn't never lay it out like, you won't see me put like eight, porcelain powders out on a palette is just not my thing. And that's what I was able to get back then. And now if we look at zirconia today, the aesthetics we're able to get is, is just, it still absolutely blows my mind. Um, and if you look at the amount of zirconia, so I have, well, I have all of these, but there's a zirconia for everything in the lab. So I have HTML and I have STML. Those two zirconias will cover every single case that's coming into the lab, just hands down. I don't have to worry about anything else. It's what we do. So we do about 1% PFM. We probably do, I don't know, maybe about 2% Emax, maybe, maybe lithium disilicate cases, and that's because of veneers. That's the only thing keeping it alive right now. And there, we were just talking about there's, there's, research and cementing protocols out there for bonding zirconia right now. So that will eventually just die off, but it's still hanging on. The rest of the whole entire laboratory is full contour zirconia. It's full con every single unit, every single restoration. We're over $25 million a year right now, and it's full contour zirconia, and there's no layering. Our we'll talk about our average sales price, but We'll have, and I'll be totally open with you guys what our prices are. Uh, zirconia monolithic anterior, I think, is just under 230. Posterior is 197. My monolithic zirconia posterior is 325. 
And it's just, it's monolithic. I'm not, I'm not layering. But it's the quality of the zirconia that allows me to do that. Because I can get the aesthetics right out of the puck. Right? And we obviously all know that it's layered. I used to have my sign up said Jeff and Anton were the greatest ceramists ever. They were on my team. Um, but because it kind of looks like this. And they spend a ton of time in work going ahead and putting that in and getting that transition zone, getting that blend. And that's really what, for me, because then I'll, I'll hear everybody be like, do you do a single central line? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Okay. It goes back to my original belief when I was a young technician about full contour with Empress. It's the same concept. If it's A2, I'm milling it out of A2 and I'm having my base just like you would press it. And then I would add my characterization. Because now we have the support materials to do that. This is kind of a cool case. We won't go through the whole thing, but this was with Dr. Chris Barwich at the University of Iowa. Um, cool texture. Cool texture. Now, I used to actually show his temps. His temps, the shade matched perfectly. It was an absolute perfect match. But they stuck out like a sore thumb because they were smooth. He didn't put any of the surface texture or anatomy on them. And that brings me to an article um, that I read, same thing when I was a young technician, I was a kid, it was Aki Yoshida. And I still talk about this article all the time, especially if I'm training technicians. He did an article where he did a single central and he just nailed the shade. I mean, the shade was money, but he missed the surface texture and the anatomy, okay? And then contour a little bit. It stuck out like a sore thumb. He did the same exact crown, like a shade and a half darker, but he nailed the surface texture and he nailed the anatomy and the thing was gone. You'd never pick it out. And so when I read that, that kind of cemented in my mind what I was doing and I was kind of on the right path. And it's still, you know, I come up and, and I do this and I tell everybody I do full contour and it's all monolithic and I'm not layering. These are actually both screw retained. Um, he was kind of upset because he lost, he had tissue creep right here. We were re really trying to save the papillas. I mean, this here came out perfect and it held, but we lost it over here. Still great case though. Still great case. And it's monolithic. It's screw retained. It's I got custom abutments underneath there. Same thing, single centrals. This was one that I did very early, early on. It's not great by any means. Won't win any awards, but it was easy. It's, I mean, so yeah, I do single centrals or monolithic. And I don't, it still amazes me that after still all these years and where we're at kind of in the industry, I know some of you guys are still not really, really not doing it yet. Or like, maybe, no, I'm going to layer it, right? No, don't. Not me, at least, right? So, I don't know. I'd rather go in and um, do something fun like smoke a cigar than sit there. And I hated building porcelain. It drove me nuts, right? It's the most obnoxious thing in the world. And it was just like not my thing. So it would give me anxiety. I'm glad that I don't do it anymore. These are your hands. These are your hands on zirconia. <laughs> Any questions? All right, so I do have a cure out of, oh, look at, they're disgusting. Jeff said I actually seep zirconia out of my skin outwards. Uh, if you look at them, they're the worst looking things you've ever seen in your life. Um, you can lotion up. Out of all the things out there, this is the best. I've tried like the utter grease that they use on cows. Um, I've tried all types of stuff. Don't, don't use that. It doesn't work. Everybody's like, yeah, you got to get the stuff they put on cows when they milk them. Yeah, it didn't work. This, this, the, it actually works like I'm for real. The gold bond, the healing, it's got to be the healing one. The rest of the ones don't work for crap. It's got to be the healing one. It really is like, it'll save you. So same thing. I mean, here, full contour, easy. Take the sprues off. Always tell everybody, if you do do this, I don't really all time at all. Really don't need to. But if you want to, just get in there and get out. If you're there for longer than three seconds, you're just messing around. And don't change the design. It's already been predetermined, right? That's yeah, surface texture and anatomy, kind of fairly easy. Here is 842R. And in the anteriors, this is going to be it's kind of where it got famous. It's going to be about the average length of an average central, the diamonds. So you can cover a complete mesial surface and a complete distal surface, right? That's why I use it, because it's long like that. 
And same thing, green stage finishing. You could get as wild and as crazy as you want or not. It's totally up to you. And when, you, when we'll do it, um, I always tell everybody, of course, I exaggerate it. Let me see how terrible my timing is right now. Oh, we're good. Um, I'll go ahead and exaggerate it because it's going to shrink. So, you know, you want to be a little bit more aggressive with it. If you get it perfect exactly the way you like it and then you center it, it's going to smooth out a little bit more and you'll be like, oh, I lost some of it. So you want to go a little bit heavier and it just, the more you do it, the more you'll kind of get used to it and what your results will be after you center it. Um, another case, I mean, and the list kind of goes on and on of what you can do when you're green stage finishing it. And you can see some of the basics that we talked about early on. Here's my one. There's a little bit deeper. Here's one. Here's one. There'd be one on that side. You can't see it. This case actually does have a little bit of secondary in it. Not a lot. And then this. That sucks. That is just terrible. Um, where's Dr. H? Is he here still? Yeah, I don't see him. He was here. So Dr. H, uh, him and I were just um, in a course I was teaching like two weeks ago. And he said, hey, man, why are you putting sprues on the facials? I don't know. I always have. I mean, I've done some of the first Zerk on a hybrid that there ever was. I always put them on there. He's like, take them off. So I took them off. Looks way better. But I mean, not all of them mill out this way. Um, that's just a bad day. I'm not going to chuck it, right? I'm going to start carving. We're going to get it to look like that. It's going to take a while. but <laughs> It's going to take a while. But that's once you go ahead and you master that, um, you can do anything you want. Uh, you know, hopefully your mills don't come out that bad. They can. They can. It happens. We've all seen it. But you have to bring it back. You got to grab it and pull it back. And that's what we did right there. And this one's just for fun. Actually, this was a crazy one on social media. This looks kind of really cool here. You can see the surface section anatomy. Um, we posted this, and it was all these responses. Like, no, I just made it for fun. It's not a real case. I made it up. It was actually a miss mill. I think back here, it's like blown out the back. So I just started cutting it and carving it just for fun, because I won't throw the disc away. And here, this one's a little bit smoother. But it's still following all of the same principles that we talked about earlier. And now all on X, okay? So this is most of what I do. Um, always have been, really. Even before we were doing them in zirconia, I used to do them in metal ceramics, which was awful. But we're going to go ahead and go through prototyping. Look how nice the prototype looks. Printed very nicely. Oh, no. Yeah, it's the same case. So <laughs> really, really bad. And we'll go ahead and green stage finish it, center it. And then we will go ahead and apply Mio. Um, and that's really what, so if there is any layering or ceramic, that's going to be it. That's all I put on. Um, and we got different versions coming out now. Um, because that was one of the pieces that was still missing was the support product. So we got the hardware. We got the software. We got the zirconia, right? But then you still, had to, you still had to add, you know, you had to add a stack. So you had to characterize it. You had to make it individual. And we didn't have the support products to really do that. You could stain it. Most of us still ended up doing some type of layering to get that characterization. Now we have the support products going on, like Mio, that we can go ahead and apply. Now there's a lower. Now well, he's a happy guy. I was with um, Dr. Yeast, and that was... The light, that was the new light, wasn't it, Jeff? I think so. Yeah. There's where it was. Um, and hybrids, we're going to talk a little bit just for fun. Um, some of the numbers on hybrids, because they're, they're kind of funny if you take a look at them, and what you can do um, by starting to really focus in on them. Same thing, this is just more pictures of the same case. This was with Dr. Mark Ludlow at the University of Utah. And so this is just the Mio shades that I've applied at this point. Now I'll add the structure. Okay, structure is just kind of for texture. And then we'll go ahead and fire it. 
And it won't look like that. It'll look more like this. One of the best things to come about with some of these changes in developments and support products is actually going to be ethnic tissue. Ethnic tissue has been so hard, so hard. I remember I was talking to ceramics company A, I won't tell you who they were, and I said, I need ethnic tissue. And they said, we can't make it for you. And I said, what do you mean you can't make it for me? He said, because it would, be, it would be so limited, it would be impossible for us to manufacture it in a quantity for the amount of use or application. And back then too, there really wasn't, hybrids were a niche. They were a niche for technicians, they were a niche for clinicians. Now everybody's doing them, right? Everybody wants an all on X. It's like uh, the veneer cosmetic dentistry craze. That's kind of where we're at. And ethnic tissue has been more, more of a bigger issue, okay? So now what we're able to do is we're able to go ahead and mix Mio, our liquid ceramics or other ones to go ahead and get that result. We weren't able to really, I mean I did ethnic tissue, but it wasn't great. And I always felt like I wasn't able to deliver to the patient what I felt was really a true representation. Um, this is an interesting case because as textured as that is, I'm gonna show you, I actually think it's light. It came out light and this was done by one of my art team members um, Jimmy Liu, and we looked at it, I said, that is incredible. And the patient was ecstatic, okay? So ethnic tissue is, is really something that is obtainable now and within reach to get a really, really great result. But yeah, Jimmy did this case. He's one of my guys on my team, and uh, he, did a, he did a pretty awesome job. Still, I would say it's a little light. Um, me, I would have asked it back for another run at it just like tweak it a little bit more. Uh, but the patient was thrilled. This was a cancer case. Uh, patient was thrilled, doctor was thrilled. It wasn't coming out of the mouth. So when we look at some of the numbers. Um, I started typing this up and I just stopped because it can go on and on forever. But if you're looking at the lab, like Jimmy, Jimmy's a perfect example. He did that hybrid. Jimmy's a great tech. He do 30 monolithic crowns a day. It's 60 contacts, it's 300 contacts a week. If my math is right, it's usually off because I'm terrible at math and spelling. And it's 1,200 contacts a month, right? And then it goes on and on and on. And it's how many, you know, it's margins and it's occlusion and it's this and it's that. Shades. And 30 crowns a day, average sales price. Let's say our average sales price is 180 per unit. So the business side of it that nobody really likes to talk about, but I'm going to, right? Um, is going to, he's gonna be at about 5,400 bucks. So Jimmy can make 5,400 bucks. And if he's piecework, right? So whatever his piecework pay is, Jimmy, and I am not kidding you, okay, you come to the lab and you'll see him do it. I could do it, he could do it. He does three hybrids in a day and he'll green stage finish one because he's always rolling them. Jimmy, then Jimmy produced $15,000 a day. So if Jimmy made $15,000 for me, how much money do you think Jimmy made? Jimmy made way more than living over here, right? And I'm more than happy to pay it to him. And that's kind of the business of Zirconia. That's the business of Full Contour. It's, it's us working smarter, okay? We always talk about it. We really don't do it. We're technicians. We like to kind of overcomplicate it more, right? And I, I will tell you a thousand times, I'm not the best technician in the world. There's tons of guys that are way better than me. I'm the first one to champion them and celebrate them. But this is kind of what I'm doing and it's working really, really well. Especially now, especially now when we look at this, okay? And there's some other damning, um, some other damning reports that are coming out right now with us coming out of this COVID disaster. But let's look right here. So this is the NADL 2021 business survey study. This was last year's, all right? Technicians. 65 and plus, over 22% of them still cruising and cranking it out at the bench. All right? 55 to 64, 38%. All right, so right there between those two numbers, almost, six, almost 60, maybe over 60% of the industry is over 55 years old. All right? Follow me here. 45 to 54, 22%. 80% of the industry is over 45 years old. 
This is where it gets scary. Let's just fast forward down to the bottom, 25 to 34, 3.8%. 3.8%. We have no new technicians coming. What are we gonna do? This guy right here, I like it. I like your passion. How old? 24. All right, there you go. There's one right there. He's rare. And obviously he's passionate because he's sitting in here with me on Friday morning at nine, right? So he's, he's got, you got, you got the right thing going on, but that's low. And so what, we, what are we noticing? We're not seeing the new technicians come in. We're all complaining about the same thing. We can't find anybody. We're trying to train. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. What are we going to do about this? Because to be honest with you, I love you guys. I am not going to be grinding it out on my ass at 65. See ya. Maybe the cigars will kind of take off the bedwetting years for me and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Only time will tell. But that's kind of where we're at as an industry and it's a scary thing. But now, now we can kind of maybe lure the younger generation into what we do with the technology. You know, they'll think it's cool. That will kind of excite them and we can draw them in. That's my hope. Right, that's my hope, and hopefully that number will increase. And then if you look at where we're at, my life's work, full contour, my dream, it's easier to teach now than it ever has been before, okay? So if you're gonna teach it, now is the time to teach it. If I can do, we were talking about the, the Mio, if, if, if you did Soprano yesterday, if I can do it and you come to a course and you can't tell the difference between mine and yours, that's success, okay? And that's where we're at in the industry right now, and hopefully that is gonna help alleviate some of that pain. Otherwise, I got all types of different plans of what I'll do for exit plan, but I'm not too worried. Um, but that's kind of where we're at, and of course, labs are, are decreasing. Now, um, I'm only teaching um, kind of exclusively at the Mod Institute. It is in uh, Charleston, it's absolutely phenomenal. In fact, Dr. Wally Renee and Dr. Mike DeFee are here, not here in this room, but they're here at the meeting wandering around. And it's, it's incredible, it's, there's nothing else like it. Um, I would say it's probably the most advanced education facility in the country. And you got them all, you got Spears and Coyce and Dawson and all these different organizations, but none of them really are digital. So what they've done here is they've, they've really taken education to a next level. It's all digital, and uh, they're, they're absolutely a couple of brilliant guys. Here's my email. So if you guys have any questions, because I'm going to be booking as soon as we finish up, um, go ahead and email me, and I'll get us kind of unplugged so that we can cut some zirconia. How's it sound? Okay. So super, super simple. We're going to do this. I make these little blocks. Um, they're pretty cool for practicing, but you could practice on anything. I'm going to cut the sprues off, which is probably the most least exciting part of this whole entire process. Yeah, it's, it's, if, you, if you do sprue from the facial, try to sprue from somewhere that's not important. Um, don't. Because actually, I mean, you know, it, ha it happens, right? But I did have um, my lady that does all of my nesting. She sunk it right here, right between eight and nine. A huge sprue. I'm like, no, you could have put it anywhere but right there. She's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. Don't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Look at, I really tell everybody, like, I'm not, I'm not in, I, I don't say, I'm not, yeah, I'm not an asshole in the lab. I call it passion. Passion. There's a difference. Yeah. That's what I like to say. Okay. So let's take a look here. And you see, I mean, everything is pretty much there. It's, it's, it's very nice. It milled out very clean. Um, a lot better than the terrible one that you've seen. Uh, it's not bad. There's not much that has to go on here. So, oh, we're good. I am going to, I'm trying to see. So now you gotta look through the very bottom of these things. I wanna get on screen. So first thing I'll kinda do is gonna be incisal cut. Let me see, I gotta make sure I'm on for you guys.
and I'll go down, I don't know, millimeter. Yeah, the Renford. Yeah, this one actually was a little bent right now too when I took it out of the box, but it popped back up into shape and I'm like, hey, look it, it's great. And then I'll go right down through here. This is where you want to keep it nice and kind of straight. And I will probably mess it up right now, but, and then I'll come through. Now this is something interesting I do. Uh, maybe you guys have seen me do this before or talk about this. So now, what am I gonna do? If this was a full arch, you could go here, and then you start going here, and then you're gonna bounce it back around and do over here, then you're gonna flip, and you, you know, you're messing around, you're going back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. So I don't do that. What I do is I will, because now we've created, you see these sharp, these sharp kind of corners? Well, those aren't supposed to be there, right? It's just because we just ran the disc through it. So now we just got it. All I'm doing is I'm not contouring it. I'm just rolling off that sharp edge. It's like kind of like a 90 degree. It comes in. You know, sorry, Arjun Box sacrificed you. When you bring it in with the disc, it's going to create that, right? In these two areas, we do not want. So all I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to, with that Renford disc, because it flexes and it cuts on the sides, I'm going to round just roll those. I'm just going to roll those sharp, sharp points. Now, you can get really, really wrapped up into this, or you can just do the mesial, do the mesial here, then I go to this one here, then I go to this one here, and then I go all the way around the arch that way. And then when I get to the last tooth in the arch, then I flip it around this way, and then I come here, and I come here, and I come here. Because what happens is I'm just going in one motion all the way across. Otherwise, you're like his. You're just, look at how many times you flip it back and forth. Flip it around, come back around. I'm flipping it again. I'm spinning one more time. Look at you're never gonna get this thing done. We gotta go, right? So that's that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Let's see if I get my glasses right. Am I on? Yeah. And it's just just a simple roll. That's it. Just go in there. And just, I'm like, I'm pulling, pulling to the side like this. Now I'm going to flip it around. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you can have your toothbrush. I've had all types of different little cool uh, gadgets for brushing off my zirconia, but just a toothbrush works just fine. Take a look at it. Hey, I like that. I'm easy today. Um, so it kind of looked like that. Now we'll do a little bit of contouring on the gingiva. I don't go crazy on it, to be honest with you guys, because we're going to put Mio on there anyways. So some of the cases you've seen, I did like this really ornate tissue contouring in the Zerk. Yeah, it's just totally waste. Because, I mean, you're going you're gonna to get all of that with the structure anyways. I mean, some definition is nice, right? And some shape definitely adds value. But you don't need to go crazy. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit more now. Let's see. That spot was just ugly right there. Okay, now let's go in. One of the most important areas is going to be your gingival embrasures. Um, Zerk a lot of times ends up looking kind of, kind of fugly, and a lot of that has to do with the embrasures. So I over open mine and kind of exaggerate them when I do it, um, especially now because it's going to shrink. But then even in the final case, I'll always exaggerate those uh, because it really, really just draws your eye in to it. 
and you know you want to make it a little bit deeper than you plan on anyways because you're going to put a little bit of a papilla in there right so if if you don't get it out and you don't get it deep enough by the time you come back and you fill it in and put a little papilla in there then it just it looks like a wall right so I try to avoid that you can really get pretty deep either with the disc or this is the flame the little flame diamond and just drive it in there and zirconia I've said it forever it's like a common sense material Ah, yeah, keep reminding me, guys, if I go, if I go rogue on you and I'm cutting over here, just give me a holler. Um, so then we'll go ahead and just deepen those and we'll clean it up a little bit. You could do it with the disc. You could do it with this. Uh, I'm just going to form that all out and prepare that. And then we're going to do surface texture and anatomy. So everybody see? Yeah. Give me a holler if I wander. Yeah, we'll put something cool on there. just get our gingiva kind of set. I'm just smoothing it out. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty bad. Looks like a dead chicken skin, my hands. Something like, let's see if everybody can kind of see it. You can kind of see, everybody kind of see what I did? It's very, I mean, very fast. There's not, there's not much to it. Uh, when we get to the surface texture anatomy part, that's kind of what I want you guys to see. But to get there, I got to go down this road a little bit first. Let's just call that kind of, uh, yeah, I'm going to call that done for the sake of argument right now. And we will get to surface section anatomy. Okay, just like we put up on the screen, I'm going to draw it on the tooth, and we'll kind of do this side and then this side. So narrow, we're going to do a narrow one. And we're going to do a wide one. We'll make that one like that long, okay? Then here, let's have one come down. There, yep. I don't know. I bought them at the gift shop on my way here. <laughs> I actually forgot my damn pencil and I was having coffee this morning. I'm like, I forgot a pencil. And so I asked the waiter and he didn't have one. I asked the waitress and she didn't. And I went to the little desk lady and she didn't have one. And I'm like, oh, I went to the little gift shop and she's like, oh, sorry, sir. We just sold out. I'm like, what? But then she had these. Save the day. What do you think about that, Jeff Lothrop? No, no, no. No, I don't know. We'll find out. Jeff's saying no. I use, um, I use just a black pencil. Um, I don't use red pencil, believe it or not. Everybody, everybody loves a red pencil. I use a black one. Have you ever seen some of the guys used to lecture, and there's a couple of articles on it. You could use a black pencil or like a black Sharpie as like a subtractive measure when you're working on your case. Shade it in in black and then look at it, and you'll see as if you took that area away. 
So I always, you guys, you guys use the black? I use the black, yeah. That's why I use the black. Um, and yeah, I haven't had anything contaminated yet. So I got that going for me. And we'll come down here. See how I'm doing that? And that's it. That's my little road map that I'm going to do pretty much every time. Looks cool, huh? Actually, see, this one's a little bit going at an angle, which is fine, right? But if this one's going to be at an angle, this one has to be at an angle. If this one's straight, this one has to be straight, because it'll just kind of throw your case off and look wonky. All right? Now, we are going to use, let's see which one, a bunch of these in here. I'm going to use this one. And what it's got, if you look at this, um, on the, the flame, it's got, you see right here, is like a fat tummy. And what I'll do is I'll ride that fat tummy when I'm, when I'm working on the case. So I'll put it here. Oh, look at that. I'll put it right here. And it's going to be more of a push, a push down like this. Then drive it, kind of drive it through, okay? That's going to give me that channel. And again, you can make that as deep or as narrow as you want it. So, and just push it. Just push it down. And we'll come over here. And there's going to be my initial kind of indentations. So they're kind of sharp, kind of coarse. I'm going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit. Roll over them. And we'll go. Somebody asked me about my vertical kind of lines I do. I don't know. I've always done them. They're not very, I keep them very narrow. A couple different versions of them. Let's see how this looks. Everybody kind of see that? Yeah? All right. Now we'll move over to the lateral. Give me some gas, Marlon. Now we're cruising. I haul with a handpiece. I just haul it wide open, fast as it'll go. And we'll do here. Kind of straighten this one out. Yeah. It's actually coming out pretty cool. It's all right. Not bad. Yeah, that's kind of kind of it, you guys. 
we'll do a little bit of horizontal um, Let me see. And that's that's basically it. And we'll go. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about how I kind of lay that out? It's pretty easy, right? Yeah, it's not it's not it's not very hard. I'll do the same thing every time. Okay, now we'll just go over this lightly. And you can do kind of, you know, if you want it texture, you can, I tap it, keep the whole edge flat, and then come across, just kind of break it up and cross hatch it. It's kind of cool. Always looks kind of neat. And sometimes, if I'm really wanting to get some fine detail, the blue dolphin carver, you know the little blue dolphin carver, it's like a half Hollenbeck, sharpen the one side with a rubber wheel, like sharp and just cut in an angle, those things work awesome on Zerk. Yeah, like your, yeah, like the ones for wax, yeah. Use them to carve the Zerk. You'd be amazed if you take that edge and just bevel it with the rubber wheel, like the Dialyte. It gets super sharp and it'll carve right through Zirconia. You could do all kinds of cool stuff with it. It's not as fast as the handpiece, but you can get some really kind of fine detail in it. And we can wear our incisal edges if we want. But that's, I mean, guys, that's basically it. It's, it's super, so all the cases you've seen and all the surface texture anatomy is all a variation of what we just did here. Um, it's not, it's not too much. Uh, it makes finishing your case so much easier post-sinter, right? Because you've, you've done most of the work. You've already done most of the work right now in the green stage. All right, I'm going to dust it off. We'll take a look at what we got. There we go. And that's pretty much essentially it. And you can wear down your incisal edges. Um, usually when I'll do that, here, I'll go ahead and do it for you guys. I will mark on the facial the highest point like this, okay? I mark the highest point. And the reason why is because when I wear the edge right now, I want to, I, I don't want to shorten it. So it's, uh, yeah, you can, oh, that would suck. So I keep that line on there as a placeholder to tell me I should still be there when you're done, right? And if it gets a little bit short, it's not going to be the end of the world. You know? But we'll kind of just hit it like this. Oh, there we go. Okay, so wore it down. Look at my blue line still there. That's the goal. This one I'm going to have to kind of turn this way. Get it. And I'll flip it back around. You know, you could do a little something cool like that. Here, let's do a little, make it look cool. Damn, that's. That's it. Now the wear facets, we can go over those real quick too. Um, 
on any tooth, I just got a real kind of neat way that I make them. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is, let me see if I can bring this. So they kind of look, if you ever look at one, They kind of look like an Egyptian eye, don't they? Right? So they're big here, and then they kind of tail off right there. So a, a cool way to make them is if you take, let's see, either that round end taper or maybe the 842R. And what you do is kind of, you're going to push it in. When I push it in, See if it, I push it in, but then I peel it out like this. See how I'm making a letter C? When you make that letter C, it's what's going to tail it off. Okay, so I'm actually opposite. It was like this. So, let's see here. So when I peel up like this, it's going to make that little teardrop. All right? So, let's see if I can get it to work for you guys live on TV. Otherwise, you're going to tell me I am a liar. Yeah, there you go. And over here. Then we can kind of connect in the middle, but that will give you your little teardrop shapes. So, not terrible for trying to get it to go on up here for you guys, but look at that. I don't like that. I need something to fix that. What's that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's always kind of different, but I'll go... If you want to do it, I mean, it looks ridiculously long on this just because it's such a, a stretch, but I'll come in to each side and kind of dig it out. And then it just kind of creates itself. So you can make it as crazy as you want, as subtle as you want, same thing. But the, the basic concept is I just cut it in from, from both sides. Let's see if I can get it to show up. Yeah, and then you can knock it down a little bit. You can kind of get a second one going right here. Let me see if I can. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, it's the best way for you to see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. But I just cut in and carve from each side, and it'll just kind of develop when you do that. There it is. Anybody else? Any other good questions? Huh? Linguals, I don't do anything to them. I just leave them alone. Um, other than worn kind of inside the ledge, I never, I never come to the back. I never, so in a posterior, let's say we're doing a hybrid. We're in the posterior. You have all your marginal ridges. I do not cut from the buckle up and over. I don't separate the marginal ridges. You don't have to separate the marginal ridges. You are just scoring glass, right? Nobody is that. I've never got one back where a guy was like, oh, man, you didn't open up those marginal ridges and separate them up. No, I leave that completely just the way it came out of the mill. And I don't cut back to the lingual side. In the anterior, I don't cut into the lingual side. I absolutely leave it. It's just whew, smooth. Just, it looks exactly like this. That's how I just leave it. So I don't cut any of down here. You're not gaining anything. Um, 
if you're really into lingual anatomy, I guess you could do it. But if I was going to do that, I would design it. I wouldn't cut it in. I would have it designed. But yeah, I don't cut into the linguals or kind of occlusal marginal ridges. I don't define those. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, because you just you just think about it. So if you go if you go deep and you get a nice embrasure, of course we're talking about a big chunk of zerk, right? You got enough space, you got enough height, and they got enough width. But if you cut in this way, where's my Yeah, I'm over here. So if you cut in this way, right? All the way there, and then you cut in this way, look what you're doing. And then you came back in here, and you were originally this thick. You've basically, like, like Jeff said, you've just gone ahead and, and removed all of this material, what would be kind of engineered for strength. Um, you don't get any more aesthetics out of it by doing it. So I just, I just leave it one. It's all one piece. In closing, I would like to thank all of you for spending this lovely morning with me. I love you all. Bye.